Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the next session on Pharmaceutical Organic Chemistry Paper 3. In the Unit 5, we will be studying about reactions of synthetic important. In the first lecture, we will be studying about the metal hydride reductions and the carbonyl to methylene reductions. I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as Associate Professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha, MHRD, New Delhi. The topics that will be covered in this session include metal hydride reductions. Basically, we will be studying about sodium borohydride and lithium aluminium hydride reductions. We will also be studying about the mechanism and uh, comparison between uh, sodium borohydride and uh, lithium aluminium hydride reductions. And uh, we also will be studying about some practical considerations. Next, we will be studying about carbonyl to methylene reductions. Uh, we will be mainly focusing on two reactions. One is wolf kushner reduction and the Clementian reduction. Let us look at uh, metal hydride reductions. Before we get into detail, let us know about what is a reduction. Reduction for a molecule is uh, mainly defined as addition of hydrogen or removal of oxygen. This is a very standard and the basic uh, explanation. And in a little bit advanced level, we can also talk about uh, electronic uh, changes. So when we say electron changes, gain of electron is basically reduction. So there is a mnemonics people generally use, Leo and Ger. The GER means gain of electron is reduction. So this is an easier way to remember uh, what is reduction and what is oxidation based on electron changes. Leo means loss of electron is oxidation. So GER means gain of electron is reduction. So these two are the mnemonics which you can remember so that uh, you can follow the reactions very uh, easily. And when we talk about uh, different types of reductions, we have uh, metal hydride reductions where uh, we can reduce uh, C double bond O, C double bond C, C double bond N, C triple bond N. All these can be reduced using metal hydride reductions. And when we talk about catalytic reductions, uh, hydrogenation, we say C double bond C or C triple bond C can be reduced uh, using catalytic reductions. Basically, palladium, platinum, nickel, uh, iron, like various uh, transition metal catalysts are used for these kind of reductions. Rhodium, iridium also can also be used. Uh, dissolving metal reduction involves a reduction of C double bond uh, C or in sometimes C triple bond C also. The famous uh, Birch reduction is an example of dissolving metal reduction. So in this reduction, basically, uh, metal is dissolved in the solvent. Uh, we will look at the Birch reductions later in this particular session. Then we have reduction of carbonyl compound to methylene. Uh, C double bond O is reduced to CH2. So there are a couple of reactions we will be studying uh, in this particular session, which include a wolf kushner reduction and a Clementian reduction. And we also have reduction of carbonyl compound leading to or the formation of alcohol. So C double bond O can be reduced to CHOH. It can be a primary alcohol or secondary alcohol. Uh, various carbonyl compounds can be reduced, say for example, aldehydes, ketones, esters can be reduced to alcohols. Even acid chloride can be reduced to alcohols. So these are all the various uh, types of reductions and in this particular session we will be looking at a few of the important reactions in this particular uh, reduction type reactions. Let us start with the uh, metal hydride reduction. So in this reduction we have two major types. One is the neutral metal hydride reduction. Another one is the complex metal hydride reductions. In the case of neutral metal hydride uh, the reducing agent is basically a electron deficient Lewis acid. Uh, basically, uh, in this particular case, we can take borane as an example. So here, 
intramolecular hydride transfer takes place to the carbon so this is what is the neutral metal hydride and these are basically boron is neutral molecule so and uh, moreover it is electron deficient so this is one example of neutral metal hydride reducing agent another one is a complex metal hydride so here we have uh, ionic compounds with a negatively charged uh, aluminium hydrides or uh, borohydride ions are involved so some examples include lithium aluminium hydride sodium borohydride these are examples of complex metal hydride reducing agents here these hydride reducing agents are actually electron rich species uh, so they react by initially donating a hydride ion to the carbon atom of the multiple bond so that is why we have the hydride ion h minus ion is present here so these are electron rich species so the major difference between neutral metal hydride is neutral metal hydride is basically electron deficient lewis acid whereas uh, complex metal hydride we have electron rich species now let us look at uh, the reactions of sodium borohydride or uh, reduction reactions of sodium borohydride so as we mentioned earlier carbonyl compounds can be reduced to alcohols especially aldehyde and ketones are reduced to primary and secondary alcohol respectively by sodium borohydride acid chlorides can be reduced to primary alcohol but uh, for this two reactions to occur we need a protic polar solvent so the reaction basically occurs in a protic polar solvent alkyl halides also can be reduced to alkane but uh, this reaction has to be carried out in a aprotic polar solvent so this is the difference between uh, depending on the different starting material we have to choose the correct solvent for the reduction of course disulfides are also can be reduced to thiols using sodium borohydride enamines imines can also be reduced and uh, if we compare the rate of reduction of uh, carbonyl compounds in alcoholic solvents basically methanol is the most preferred solvent the reaction occurs very fast in uh, methanol tertiary butanol is the least preferred solvent because the reduction occurs very slowly in this solvent so most of the cases for the reduction of uh, carbonyl compounds either methanol or ethanol is used because these are the protic solvents so acid chloride reduction or aldehyde ketone reduction generally is carried out in protic polar solvent so in these reactions methanol or ethanol is the preferred solvent for this reaction sodium borohydride is uh, considered as a very mild reducing agent because it does not reduce uh, many of the groups say for example Uh, sodium borohydride cannot be used to reduce nitro groups carboxylic acids esters amide carbonate carbamate lactone epoxide nitrile alkene and alkyne so this is one of the reason sodium borohydride is considered as a very mild reducing agent it generally reduces aldehydes ketones acid chlorides alkyl halides disulfides enamines and imines let us look at uh, the reactions so here we see the carbonyl reduction reaction so an aldehyde is treated with the sodium borohydride in methanol to give a primary alcohol when we take uh, ketones ketones undergo reduction to give a secondary alcohol this acid chloride undergoes reduction to give primary alcohol so these are all the various carbonyl starting materials which can be converted to the corresponding hydroxy derivatives or alcohols and in this particular case we have an example of imine reduction so this is the imine nitrogen so this double bond is reduced to the single bond using sodium borohydride in methanol so in these kind of reductions we are using a protic solvent that is protic polar solvent is used for this particular reduction and if we take a halogen reduction as we mentioned we have to use a polar a protic solvent and that is the reason here we are using dmso dimethyl sulfoxide is used as a solvent in this reduction so here a primary alkyl halide or in this particular case a secondary alkyl halide can be reduced to the corresponding alkanes so here uh, we say sodium borohydride in the presence of a polar a protic solvent is used for this particular reduction 
and in the case of disulfide reductions we have to use a mixture of solvents uh, this is uh, we do need a protic uh, solvent for this particular reduction to occur so these are all the some of the examples of reduction reactions that can be carried out using sodium borohydride now if we look at uh, stereoselectivity of sodium borohydride reductions uh, we have only a moderate stereoselectivity for sodium borohydride reduction because this is a very mild reducing agent uh, here the hydride ion actually tend to attack the sterically hindered compounds from the least sterically hindered site so if we look at uh, this particular carbonyl compound so the exo phase so we can the sodium borohydride can come and attack from this side or it can come and attack from this side so we have uh, two types so one attack from this side another attack from this side so if the attack happens from let me put this as uh, number one and uh, let me put this as number two so if the attack happens from the side one then the alcohol will be formed as shown here okay so this is from the attack one and if the attack takes place from the other side which is the side mentioned here as two the alcohol will be formed in this particular orientation so this is the attack two and this leads to the exo product where we only have 14 percent of the product that is formed in this reaction and the other endo product is formed in 86 percent so in other words we say whenever there is a possibility of a stereochemical outcome for a particular reaction the exo phase of the carbonyl group is more open because this side is open for the hydride ion to attack whereas this side is prevented from the groups which are here so we have a basically we have a proton here so this proton actually hinders the attack of the hydride ion from this side so that is the reason we get a less yield of this product whereas there is nothing to prevent the hydride attack from this side so the exocide attack is the most favored attack which leads to the endo product in other words the outside attack leads to the inside product so that is what happens in this reaction so we get uh, the endo selectivity in a certain uh, stereo uh, chemical outcome for certain compounds but generally this kind of stereoselectivity is very very less when we use sodium borohydride alone for the reduction reaction let us look at another reaction that is luci reduction it is a selective organic reduction of alpha beta unsaturated ketone to allylic alcohol using sodium borohydride and cecl3 cerium trichloride in methanol or ethanol so that is how uh, shown here as we mentioned earlier sodium borohydride is a mild reducing agent and it does not reduce the double bond so that is the reason when we have a alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound only the carbonyl compound that is the carbonyl unit is uh, reduced without affecting the double bond so this is one of the examples where we can clearly see the alkene double bond is not at all affected by the sodium borohydride reducing agent and this is also an example of a conjugate reduction so uh, this carbonyl group that is the ketone is the only thing which undergoes reduction to alcohol so this is an example of luci reduction this is a milder condition and there is another reaction which is a reductive amination reaction so in the reductive amination reaction or the hydroamination reaction an aldehyde or ketone is generally mixed with an amine in the presence of sodium borohydride which leads to the formation of corresponding n alkyl amine so here we have the carbonyl compound and we have a amino compound so when these two are mixed together in the presence of sodium borohydride and we do need to have a protic polar solvent here we are using isopropanol that leads to the formation of an imine and the imine is reduced to the corresponding amine so we have a secondary amine formed in this particular case when we start with the primary amine 
we end up with a secondary amine as our product. So if we look at uh, the simple mechanism by which the reaction actually occurs, a SIFT base uh, is basically formed in the first step, uh, which is actually reduced to the corresponding amino derivative. And uh, this reaction generally is favored under acidic pH, that is uh, pH uh, between 3 to 4. So if you look at the reaction mechanism, it is uh, basically the initial step is the loss of water molecule to form this shift space. So this undergoes reduction in the presence of sodium borohydride to give the corresponding amino. In this particular case, we are getting a secondary amine. So in the metal hydride demercuration reaction, uh, sodium borohydride has been widely used to reduce organomercurials to produce the corresponding hydrocarbons. So the mechanism basically involves reduction of the organomercurials. So this is the organomercurial. This is reduced by sodium borohydride to give RHGH. So this uh, halogen is removed by the sodium borohydride and this leads to the formation of the alkyl radical as shown here. So this alkyl radical reacts with the organomercurial to give the RH, the alkane is formed. And this RHD dot can, uh, the radical can decompose to give alkyl radical and mercury. So this is the radical reaction mechanism for this particular reaction. So in this particular case, the organomercurials can be reduced or converted to alkanes as shown here. If you look at the mechanism of the reductions using sodium borohydride, here we have an aldehyde. The aldehyde is treated with the sodium borohydride to give a primary alcohol. So in the mechanism, what happens is we have the sodium borohydride. So as we mentioned earlier, this is a complex ion metal hydride. So this is has the sodium plus ion and the borohydride minus ions are there. So because the borohydride minus ion uh, is present, this hydride is the one which is actually transferred to the carbonyl group. Because of the presence of the electron withdrawing oxygen, the carbonyl bond is polarized towards oxygen. So this carbon becomes electropositive. In other words, it becomes an electrophilic carbon. So that is, in other words, this is having electron deficiency and the hydride ion is having the negative charge. So this is a nucleophile. So this nucleophile attacks the electrophilic carbon. So that leads to the formation of this kind of intermediate. And this reaction is the first step, which is the addition reaction. And in the reaction, we have a solvent. And this solvent is having a protic solvent because that is what we have mentioned earlier. In this particular case, if we are using a protic solvent, that proton, the solvent from the protic solvent is abstracted by the negative charge on the oxygen. So if the hydride is lost, then we have BH123. So three hydrogens are there with boron. So that forms the borane, BH3 is formed. And this leads to the formation of the alcohol as shown here. And we have a Na plus ion here. We have a OH minus ion here. So these two combine to form NaOH, sodium hydroxide is formed. So this step is basically the protonation of the alkoxide ion that takes place to form the final product. So whenever we run the reaction, the reaction is actually quenched by ammonium chloride or mild acidic conditions can be used to quench the reaction because this is a complex which is formed in this particular reaction that can be cleaved by the hydrolysis. That is basically the alkoxide ion abstracts the proton from the solvent to give the corresponding alcohol derivative. And in particular, in some cases, this particular reduction, that is the sodium borohydride reduction, can also be carried out in a aprotic solvent. Uh, say, for example, dimethyl formamide can be used for this particular reduction. So in that case, how the reaction actually proceeds? So the initial step is very similar to the previous one. The only difference is 
instead of the hydride that is actually transferred to the electrophilic carbon this bond is not polarized towards oxygen but this double bond is actually now bonded to the boron so we get uh, something which is similar to the four membered ring uh, intermediate is formed so this is uh, what happens in the case of when we are using aprotic solvents so there are three more hydrogens present in the boron so all the three bo hydrogens can be replaced in the similar way so after the first uh, bond is formed to the boron oxygen then the second carbonyl can add to the boron in a very similar fashion so that leads to multiple uh, exchanges of all the hydrogens from the borohydride so we get a tetra oxygen substituted derivative is formed and this is an intermediate uh, which uh, is not generally isolated and during the acidic workup these bonds are basically cleaved the boron oxygen bonds all the boron oxygen bonds are cleaved by the acidic workup that leads to four molecules of the reduced alcohol so we start from uh, let us say in this particular case we are starting from a ketone uh, this is acetone the simplest one and we end up with a isopropanol four molecules of isopropanol is formed so this is a little bit a different mechanism in a aprotic solvent so in the previous one we saw uh, the protic mechanism in the aprotic mechanism the hydride is not actually transferred and the borane in the previous case we have the bh3 is formed as the byproduct in a aprotic solvent the bh3 again undergoes further reactions with the carbonyl derivative to give the tetraalkyl borate derivative and this undergoes hydrolysis to give the alcohol four molecules of the alcohol is formed so this is a little bit a different type of mechanism but it doesn't matter which solvent you are using sodium borohydride effectively reduces the carbonyl compound to the hydroxy derivative so that is the one you have to always remember depending on the solvent we are using the mechanism may change but that does not change the product let us look at reductions using lithium aluminum hydride so lithium aluminum hydride also reduces aldehydes ketones esters acids anhydride and acid chlorides to alcohol so here in the case of lithium aluminum hydride we generally use ether as the solvent whereas in the case of sodium borohydride for the reduction of carbonyl compounds we were using methanol that is protic polar solvent was used whereas in the case of lithium aluminum hydride we generally use a non polar solvent non polar aprotic solvent that is ether is basically used the reduction of amides azides nitriles followed by hydrolysis gives the amine derivatives in amines imines nitro groups can be reduced to amine directly alkyl halides are also reduced to alkane disulfides are reduced to thiols so if you look at all these reactions basically amides azides nitriles are not reduced by sodium borohydride whereas they are reduced by lithium aluminum hydride let us now look at the reactions of lithium aluminum hydride the first one is the carbonyl reduction reaction so an aldehyde ketone acid chloride or ester can be reduced to primary alcohol or secondary alcohol using lithium aluminum hydride as we mentioned earlier for this kind of reduction reactions we generally use a non polar aprotic solvent basically here we are using tetrahydrofuran as a solvent reduction of aldehyde gives primary alcohol ketone reduction leads to secondary alcohol use of acid chloride or ester as the starting material gives primary alcohol as a final product for these kind of reduction reactions the equivalence of lithium aluminum hydride used keeps on changing depending on how much hydride is required for the reduction so in this particular case we need actually one two hydride ions for the reduction to occur whereas in the case of 
This one also has a hydroxyl group a proton comes from the workup after the reaction is over. Basically, one of these hydrides which were transferred during this reaction. In the case of secondary alcohol, we have one hydride that is transferred. So, in other words, for the reduction of uh, aldehyde, we do need uh, large quantities of uh, lithium aluminium hydride. That is, uh, roughly one to one equivalent can be used for complete uh, reduction. Whereas, in the case of uh, ketones, we can use less equivalents of lithium aluminium hydride because we require only one equivalent of hydride for the reduction to occur. In the case of acid chlorides, we do need uh, two hydrides are transferred and for esters also two hydrides are transferred. So aldehyde, acid chloride, ester reduction basically requires large quantities of lithium aluminium hydride that is one is to one equivalent is generally used or even a little bit excess is also being used. Whereas in the case of ketone reduction, we can use less amount of lithium aluminium hydride. And uh, similar to the sodium borohydride um, reactions, lithium aluminium hydride also can be used for the imine reduction as shown here. The only difference is in the sodium borohydride case, we were using a protic polar solvent, uh, which is methanol. In the lithium aluminium hydride, we are using non-polar aprotic solvent that is THF. The same way halogen reduction can also be carried out using lithium aluminium hydride. The disulfide reduction also follows the same way. So the disulfide is reduced to give the thiols. And one major difference between lithium aluminium hydride and sodium borohydride is the inverse addition reactions using lithium aluminium hydride. So what is this inverse addition reaction? Basically, in the inverse addition, the reagent that is a lithium aluminium hydride is added to the substrate. So in generally, uh, in many of the cases, what in the normal addition, what people do is people mix both the things together and they carry out the reaction. But in the case of inverse addition reaction, uh, what is done is the reagent that is lithium aluminium hydride is added to the substrate very slowly or in small quantities. For example, the nitrile that is CN group can be reduced to CHNH by the inverse addition reaction, whereas the same nitrile can be reduced to amine CH2NH2 by the normal reduction. So in the normal reduction, what we do is uh, the because this lithium aluminium hydride is a solid. So in general, when we have to run the reaction, basically the solid substances are taken in the reaction flask. And if we take a nitrile or carbonyl compounds, which are basically liquids, can be dissolved in the reacting solvent and they can be added to the reaction medium where the lithium aluminum hydride is suspended. So this is the normal addition reaction. Whereas in the inverse addition reaction, what happens is the uh, substrate that is the aldehyde or ketone in this particular case, the nitrile is taken in the reaction flask and the lithium aluminum hydride is added in small portions to the reaction medium. So another example is the normal reduction of cinnamaldehyde generally gives hydrocinamyl alcohol. So this is the normal, uh, this is the cinnamaldehyde. We have a double bond, we have a carbonyl group. So both are reduced when we carry out the reaction using normal addition conditions. In other words, lithium aluminum hydride is taken in the reaction flask. Cinnamaldehyde is added to the lithium aluminum hydride. That leads to the complete reduction of both the double bond and the carbonyl group, leading to the formation of hydrocinamyl alcohol. Whereas if we do the inverse addition for the cinnamaldehyde, what happens is lithium aluminum hydride is added to the cinnamyl aldehyde in a small quantities. So this is what is called the inverse addition reaction. So under the inverse addition, only the carbonyl group is reduced to the alcohol. The double bond is not at all affected. So this is one of the advantage of using inverse addition reaction. In other words, we can actually control 
the product formation by changing the mode of addition which one is added first which one is added second so let us look at the reduction reaction the mechanism for the lithium aluminium hydride reduction so this is the ester the starting material this is actually reduced with lithium aluminium hydride so the lithium aluminium hydride is a complex metal hydride so this exists as li plus and alh4 minus so the li plus actually coordinates with the carbonyl oxygen because this oxygen is having a lone pair of electron and the lithium is uh, electron deficient in this particular case so the lone pair and the lithium are coordinated to give a small polarization of this one so in other words to compensate that the double bond is actually polarized towards the electronegative oxygen because this lithium ion actually polarizes the oxygen so that makes this electrophilic carbon more electron deficient so to compensate that the hydride from the aluminium hydride is transferred to this electrophilic carbon so this leads to the formation of alh3 and in the charge reversal of the alkoxide the or group is lost so this uh, o minus has a extra electrons on the oxygen so during the charge reversal this electron is given towards the carbon oxygen bond under that condition this particular carbon becomes pentavalent because there is two bonds here one two three three more bonds are here so total this carbon will become a pentavalent which is quite unstable so to remove the instability this or group is lost as or minus so that leads to the aldehyde in the first step so there is a lithium plus and we have a or minus so this or minus and the li plus both form uh, li or and uh, when the negative charge is shifted between the oxygen and carbon we get a double bond here so or c double bond oh that is the aldehyde so this is the first initial stage of reduction of an ester and of course in the reaction medium we have a large amount of lithium aluminium hydride so the reaction does not stop at this particular stage if we have to stop at this particular stage we have to run the reaction with smaller quantities of lithium aluminium hydride and we also need to run the reaction at low temperature but reduction of ester to aldehyde is very very difficult using lithium aluminium hydride because lithium aluminium hydride is a very strong reducing agent so because of the presence of uh, excess of lithium aluminium hydride in the system the carbonyl group can also or further undergoes a reduction as happened in the first step so here again the same way the oxygen is bonded towards the lithium plus ion due to which the double bond is shifted towards the oxygen to compensate the carbon's electron deficiency the hydride is transferred from the al aluminium hydride so this leads to this particular intermediate which on hydrolysis gives the corresponding alcohol and lithium hydroxide is formed as a byproduct so in effect what we can say is ester is reduced to the alcohol using these multiple steps so far we have been discussing sodium borohydride is a milder reducing agent compared to lithium aluminium hydride so why there is uh, such a great difference between uh, sodium borohydride and lithium aluminium hydride in their reactivity so we will start from the very basics uh, let us compare the electronic configuration of boron and aluminium boron and aluminium are in the same group but they are uh, having uh, one row below boron is in the second row and aluminium is in the third row so we have the s2p1 configuration for boron and uh, that is 2s2 2p1 configuration for boron and uh, 3s2 3p1 configuration for aluminium and if you look at the size boron is smaller whereas aluminium is larger and uh, the major difference uh, which is uh, responsible for this selectivity in reduction or the higher uh, 
reducing power is related to the electronegativity. So the boron is having a very high uh, electronegativity of 2.04, whereas aluminum is having a very low electronegativity of 1.61. And of course, if you look at the nature, boron is a metalloid, whereas aluminium is basically a metal. And uh, if we look at the X-H bond, uh, boron is having a very short bond. In other words, the boron-hydrogen bond is a very strong bond compared to the long aluminium-hydrogen bond. Because if the bond is longer, obviously we can say that is a weak bond in this particular case. So comparatively between boron and aluminium, aluminium hydrogen bonds are weaker. That is due to the electronegativity difference also. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is having only 6.6 .6 kilocalories per mole. So this bond can be easily broken. And uh, due to this, the bond reactivity, we can say because of a strong bond, the reactivity is low or less. Because of a weak bond in aluminium, the reactivity is very high. So comparing all this information, what we can conclude is the low electronegativity of aluminium than boron basically shifts the electron density towards the hydrogen in aluminium hydrogen bond than in the boron hydrogen bond. Due to this, the lithium aluminium hydride is a much better hydride donor than sodium borohydride. In other words, lithium aluminium hydride is a stronger reducing agent because it can effectively donate the hydride ion. If you look at the comparison of various boron reducing agents, we have only studied about sodium borohydride, but there are also other boron reducing agents like lithium, lithium borohydride, sodium cyanoborohydride, sodium triacetoxy borohydride, borane. So these are all the various boron reducing agents. And if you look at the reactivity, we can compare sodium borohydride as the reference. Lithium borohydride is much stronger than sodium borohydride. Whereas uh, sodium cyanoborohydride or triacetoxy borohydride are much milder than sodium borohydride. Borane is much stronger reducing agent than sodium borohydride. And if you look at the reducing power, sodium borohydride reduces imine aldehydes and ketones. Lithium borohydride even reduces ester, so it is very similar to lithium aluminium hydride. Sodium cyanoborohydride does not reduce aldehydes or ketone, it only reduces imine. Whereas sodium cyanoborohydride reduces imine aldehyde, but it does not reduce carbonyl uh, ketones. And borane can reduce aldehydes, esters. Esters are reduced slowly. Amides and acids can also be reduced using borane. And the reactivity, if we take in the case of protic solvent, uh, the reaction between sodium borohydride and the polar solvent is very, very slow. Lithium borohydride also follows the same trend, whereas the sodium cyanoborohydride reacts with methanol, but other alcohols are uh, less reactive. Sodium triacetoxy borohydride hydrolyzes readily. Uh, that's the reason alcohols are not used in the reduction of reagent when we use sodium triacetoxy borohydride. Borane reacts very slowly with protic solvent. Uh, mainly, as we mentioned in the lithium aluminium hydride reduction, the oxygen coordinates with the lithium in the initial step. Similar to that, in the case of lithium borohydride also, the complexation of the lithium aluminium to the carbonyl of the ester group helps its reduction of esters. So lithium can effectively coordinate with the oxygen compared to sodium. So that is the reason Lithium reducing agents, lithium borohydride or lithium aluminium hydrides are much stronger reducing agents compared to sodium for the reduction of esters. And if we compare the reactivity of the various reducing agents, what we have studied so far, sodium borohydride can reduce aldehyde. So whatever is given green here means this particular reagent can reduce this particular group. If it is red, it does not reduce. So in the case of Lucci reduction, cerium trichloride and sodium borohydride. Aldehydes are generally not reduced. So this is the major uh, selectivity difference, chemoselectivity difference between normal sodium borohydride and uh, uh, lanthanide induced uh, sodium borohydride reductions. So aldehydes are reduced by both sodium borohydride. Ketones are also reduced, whereas in the Lucci reduction, aldehydes are not at all reduced and only selectively the ketones are reduced. 
In the case of lithium aluminum hydride, it reduces both aldehydes, ketones, esters, amides. Uh, very slowly, carboxylic acids are reduced, alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes are reduced, acid chlorides are reduced, and al alkyl halides are also reduced. So, lithium aluminum hydride uh, effectively reduces most of the functional groups, whereas uh, sodium borohydride does not reduce esters, amides, carboxylic acids, or alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. And uh, when we take the nitro group anhydride, Disulfide is reduced by all the three reducing agents. Imines are also reduced by all the three reducing agents. Alkenes are not generally reduced by sodium borohydride, uh, say uh, Lucci reduction or lithium aluminum hydride. Enamines are reduced both by sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. Acides and uh, nitriles are not reduced by sodium borohydrides. So this way we can actually compare what is the reactivity of the different functional groups with respect to the different reducing agents. Let us now look at uh, some of the practical considerations. Although we studied about uh, sodium borohydride and uh, lithium aluminum hydride reductions theoretically, there are few practical considerations we have to pay attention to. Uh, we had already seen sodium borohydride and uh, lithium aluminum hydride basically reacts with polar protic solvents, that is with water and methanol. So, although many reactions of sodium borohydride can be carried out in methanol or water, there is a possibility that sodium borohydride does react with methanol and water, but in very slow rate. But on the other hand, if you look at lithium aluminum hydride, the lithium aluminum hydride reacts violently with water with the evolution of hydrogen gas. So this is one of the major limitation due to which uh, we cannot use water as a solvent for lithium aluminum hydride reduction because uh, during the evolution of uh, hydrogen gas, excess heat is generated in this particular uh, reaction. So that leads to explosion or fire. So that is the reason lithium aluminum hydride and water are never uh, treated together. So you have to be very careful. Uh, we should never carry out uh, lithium aluminum hydride reaction with in water as the solvent. So uh, instead of uh, protic polar solvents, now we have to settle with uh, some other solvent. So basically for lithium aluminum hydride reductions, the preferred solvent is aprotic solvent and preferably diethyl ether or in most cases THF is also, that is tetrahydrofuran is also used as a solvent. We have already seen that the borohydride anion is much less reactive than aluminum hydride. And uh, due to that reason, uh, that sodium borohydride reacts very slowly with the protic solvent, especially water. So that's the reason sodium borohydride reaction can be carried out in water also. And uh, finally, the, uh, due to the slower reactivity of uh, borohydride, uh, partial selectivity that is a sin-anti ratio or major minor product formation in, in an unsymmetrical ketone reduction is possible. That is, the Felkin and product is possible uh, in the case of sodium borohydride. But uh, lithium aluminum hydride is highly reactive, so we don't see any such uh, selectivity, not even a partial selectivity in the case of lithium aluminum hydride reductions. And uh, specifically for uh, lithium aluminum hydride, uh, we have to look into some of the practical considerations. Uh, the lithium aluminum hydride uh, reacts with the compounds containing acidic protons. So we have to be very careful when we choose the starting material. Say for example, carboxylic acid, uh, primary alcohols or basically alcohols, amines cannot be used where we have a acidic protons in the substrate. So lithium aluminum hydride cannot be used for reducing these kind of substrates. And of course, if we are going to reduce uh, amide using lithium aluminum hydride, that uh, many times gives a complex mixture. So that reaction is not selective in many cases because uh, we get uh, two different types of reductions. One is the carbonyl group C double bond O reduction to CH2 and as well as the acyl nitrogen bond is also cleaved. That means RCO and the NH2 uh, in the case of uh, substituted amides 
primary amines or the secondary amines are actually formed when the amide bond is cleaved. So that also happens in the case of LAH reduction. So uh, that is the reason uh, for the reduction of amides. Lithium aluminum hydride is not a preferred reagent. And of course, uh, if we are going to reduce enones, there again we have a competition between 1,2 as well as 1,4 addition products when we use lithium aluminum hydride. So here also we have to be very careful. So in other words, when we are going to use lithium aluminum hydride as a reducing agent, although it is a very good reducing agent for esters, carbonyl compounds and various other functional groups can be reduced. Some of the groups or the functional groups which are present in the substrate actually makes uh, LIH not a suitable producing agent. And in the case of order of reduction between aldehyde, ketone and uh, epoxides and esteries, aldehydes and ketones are reduced much faster compared to epoxides which in turn are better reduced compared to esters. So in other words, if uh, the molecule contains aldehyde ketone functionality and an ester functionality, uh, the first uh, functionality that undergoes reduction is always aldehydes and ketones. And if you look at uh, how to do the workup, uh, theoretically when we talk about uh, lithium aluminum hydride reductions, lithium aluminum hydride can deliver four hydrides. But in practice, uh, LAH is used slightly more than one equivalence. In other words, we actually have to use a large excess of lithium aluminum hydride for the reduction to occur. And uh, when the reaction is over, uh, uh, there will always be uh, excess of lithium aluminum hydride. So this has to be neutralized. So this is another uh, major problem when we uh, treat uh, lithium aluminum hydride as a reducing agent. So how can we neutralize the reaction mixture? Uh, after the reaction is over, uh, we have to cool the reaction flask with uh, ice. And uh, then we have to add uh, cold water very carefully to the reaction medium. We already know water reacts violently with the lithium aluminum hydride. So the addition of water should be very careful like a drop wise addition has to be carried out. And again, uh, instead of a normal room temperature water, it is preferred to use a cold ice cold water so that the reaction is uh, less vigorous. And uh, when we add the water to this uh, excess of lithium aluminum hydride, we can actually see uh, the brisk effervescence of uh, hydrogen evolution. So we have to keep on adding drop by drop cold water until the brisk effervescence stops. So this we can visually see and we can also theoretically calculate how much water is required to uh, neutralize uh, lithium aluminum hydride. Of course, we have to use uh, excess of water to quench the uh, lithium aluminum hydride which is present in the reaction. So after the quenching is over, uh, when we are sure like all the lithium aluminum hydride is neutralized, we can actually filter the reaction contents because we, it will be like a suspension. So the suspension has to be filtered using a sealite. Sealite is nothing but an inorganic uh, filtrating material uh, which can be used uh, to remove the inorganic uh, lithium complexes and uh, this cake can be washed with an organic uh, solvent uh, multiple times so that uh, the compound is completely uh, extracted. And finally, uh, the obtained filtrate will have aqueous water and as well as the organic compound. So that has to be extracted with the organic solvent so that uh, we can get the pure product. So these are all the various uh, practical considerations when we have to use uh, lithium aluminum hydride for the reduction reaction. Let us now move on to carbonyl reduction to methylene groups. So the first one is the wolf kushner reduction we will be looking at now. So in this particular case, hydrazine NH2NH2 is used as a reducing agent in the presence of a strong base. Basically, potassium hydroxide or other strong bases are used and the reaction is generally carried out at high temperature that is ethylene glycol or basically some uh, dimethyl glycol or diethyl glycol or some glycolic solvents are used which are having a very high boiling point. And the other one is a Clemmensen reduction. So in this Clemmensen introduction, zinc amalgam in the presence of a acid is used for the reduction. Basically, aqueous HCl is used. This can be uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid also can be used. 
So between the wolf fission reduction and the Clementian reduction, these are basically complementary reactions. One is carried out in the presence of base. So if we have a group which is base sensitive in the substrate, generally wolf fission reduction is not used because it uses the base. Whereas Clementian reduction can be used for those cases because it uses only the acidic conditions. So depending on the sensitivity of the groups present in the molecule, we can actually choose between wolf fission reduction and Clementian reduction. Both the reactions work uh, pretty well. And the next one is a catalytic reduction, so or uh, catalytic hydrogenation. Here, palladium catalyst or platinum catalyst are generally used with the hydrogen gas. And another method is the thioacetal formation and the reduction. So basically, the formation of the thioacetal with uh, ethane dithiol and the Lewis acid followed by reduction using ranonickel can also be used to remove the carbonyl oxygen. So CO group can be converted to CH2 by this particular reaction as well. Let us look at the wolf kushner reduction. So this is basically the reduction of uh, ketones to methylene compounds and the reagent used are basically hydrazine and KOH. The solvent used is basically high boiling solvent that is glycols are used. So this is acetophenone. Acetophenone is uh, converted to the corresponding uh, ethyl benzene. Of course, we will be seeing the limitation of this particular reaction because this reaction is uh, very, very slow or a sluggish reaction as far as uh, wolf kushner reduction is concerned. But generally, many other ketones can be used effectively using this particular method to the corresponding alkanes. If we look at the mechanism, uh, the, as we mentioned in the beginning, this particular reduction involves use of hydrazine. So the carbonyl compound reacts with the hydrazine and this hydrogen actually gives a hydrazone derivative. So if you look at a step by step mechanism, the first step is the formation of the hydrazone. So this is a hydrazone that is formed in the initial step and it is followed by the deprotonation of the acidic hydrogen on the amine. So we have a NH2. This proton is a highly acidic proton and this undergoes a deprotonation in the next step because this deprotonation is actually done by the conjugate base of the ethylene glycol. So KOH as the base does not abstract this proton but the conjugate base of the ethylene glycol. So O minus from the ethylene glycol actually abstracts this proton and this is the rate determining step. So that is the step number two is the rate determining step followed by when this proton is abstracted, this nitrogen gets the negative charge. So this negative charge is now distributed to the, it undergoes resonance structures with the nitrogen and then again it shifts to the carbon also. So finally, after the protonation, so as we mentioned here, um, during this resonance step, the protonation of the carbon and the deprotonation on the nitrogen leads to loss of N2 gas and the carbon ion as shown here. So in the fourth step, these two nitrogens are lost as N2 gas. So that leads to the formation of the carbon ion as shown here. And uh, this undergoes protonation to give the corresponding reduced product. So these are all the various steps involved in the wolf kushner reduction. If you do the wolf kushner reduction on an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone, then we are actually ending up with a mixture of products. Say, for example, we have an alpha-beta carbonyl compound shown here. 1,2-DME is a dimethylethylene glycol solvent and KOH is the base which is used and hydrazine is also used and high temperature condition. The first step is the formation of the hydrazone. So this hydrazone, uh, as we mentioned, in the undergoes a step 2, 3, 4, to give the corresponding alkane, the reduced, the carbonyl group is reduced. But in this particular case, instead of the double bond is actually shifted here. So this product where the carbonyl is completely reduced is formed only in 30%, whereas there is a isomerization of this double bond leading to the major product. So this is one of the reason Alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds cannot be reduced using wolf kushner reduction effectively because this leads to mixture of product formation. 
then the next one is the Clementian reduction so here we will be using a acidic condition so in the previous case we were using basic conditions wolf kushner was basically used a base sodium potassium hydroxide as the base whereas in the case of Clementian reduction we are going to use hydrochloric acid so here again the reduction of the ketone to methylene compound takes place the reagent uses zinc mercury that is the zinc amalgam and uh, highly concentrated hydrochloric acid is also used under reflux conditions so in both the cases both these reductions require high temperature for it to effectively carry out so let us look at the mechanism here since we are using a strongly acidic condition the initial step is the protonation of the corresponding uh, carbonyl oxygen so the major difference between the wolf fischner reduction and the Clementian reduction here is we are actually getting a radical intermediate which is formed in this reaction because in this reaction pinacols are formed so the formation of pinacol can only be explained based on the radical intermediate so this radical intermediate is proposed based on the pinacol formation but in this particular Clementian reduction there is no alcohol formed so that is also one of the reason how the reaction actually proceeds via the radical intermediate because this alcohol is never isolated in a Clemenson reduction whereas pinacols are formed so that is a very clear indication that this reaction proceeds via a radical mechanism so in the next step the zinc adds to the carbon radical so the zinc gets the radical uh, that electron is transferred to the zinc so this is uh, the OH group is removed as a water molecule after protonation because OH is a very poor leaving group whereas when a proton is added to that that becomes a very good uh, leaving group so the water molecule is lost in the next step that leads to the formation of a carbocation so this carbocation can now be stabilized by the the electron on the zinc so the carbon gets the negative charge or it becomes an anion and this anion now abstracts a proton by the then finally zinc plus is lost to give the final product let us look at some of the limitations of Clemenson reduction uh, basically the hydroxyl aromatics uh, which are isomers of cyclic vinyl ketones are not reduced because they doesn't exist as a ketone they are uh, generally existing as a isomers of cyclic vinyl ketones and uh, alpha keto acids or alpha keto esters are partially reduced to the alpha hydroxy acids or esters respectively there is no complete reduction of the carbonyl to the methylene group and uh, the reduction of beta keto esters actually affords pure hydrocarbon that means both the ester and the ketone are reduced and we finally end up with the pure hydrocarbon the reduction of benzophenone is generally not successful and it actually gives a resinous product and as I mentioned earlier for the reduction of acetophenone dilute hydrochloric acid gives styrene instead of ethyl benzene so in this particular case we have to be very careful in carrying out the reduction with acetophenone so these are some of the limitations of Clemenson reduction and amino ketone generally undergo reduction to give rearranged product so this is one of the major limitations and of course this had been effectively used for the preparation of many heterocyclic compounds let us recap what we have studied so far we have studied about uh, metal hydride reductions basically uh, complex ion metal hydride reductions we have seen sodium borohydride and lithium aluminium hydride reductions are the two we have studied uh, what are the solvents, what are the reaction conditions, how much equivalence of the reducing agents we have to reduce for reducing the functional groups we have studied. Basically, aldehydes, ketones, esters, uh, basically carbonyl compounds can be reduced uh, using uh, sodium borohydride, mainly ketones and aldehydes and esters can also be reduced using lithium aluminium hydride between the two sodium borohydride is a milder reducing agent compared to lithium aluminium hydride and we have also studied about uh, the various applications uh, the reaction mechanism of both the reduction reactions and we also have studied about the practical considerations of how to use lithium aluminium hydride in a 
organic chemistry synthesis. We also studied about uh, carbonyl uh, reduction to methylene uh, group. Uh, basically, we studied about uh, the wolf questioner reduction and the Clementian reductions. These are the uh, base uh, and the acid uh, conditions uh, which are used for the reductions. In the case of wolf questioner, we use a strong base uh, potassium hydroxide and uh, in uh, high uh, boiling solvent, uh, methylene or ethylene glycols. And in the case of Clementian reductions, uh, we will be employing um, zinc and amalgam and uh, acidic condition that is the concentrated hydrochloric acid condition. So these are all the two complementary reactions for the reduction of carbonyl groups to methylene. With that, we conclude this particular session. Thank you.